Can you hear me, Austin? Mm, I don't hear you. Like, I mean, I guess that could be on my end. Hold on, let me see here. Set microphone. Set speaker. Did that change it? Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, there it is. Perfect. I can hear you now. Oh, wait, I could hear you. And now you're silent again. Huh, this is weird. Because uh -huh. I'll, there you are. I'll switch to that, but then I can't hear you. So Oh, interesting. Uh are you are you using a yeah, are you using a different mic from your uh headphones? Can't hear you. Yeah, I still can't hear you. Let's see, does that work? And there you are. Yes, it does. Yep. For some reason, I I think it's because these are Bluetooth headphones and uh -huh. it, it does some weird stuff. Yeah. Um, because it'll think this, for some reason, Windows thinks these are two different devices. Oh, interesting. Like huh. it thinks it's a headphone and a headset. Uh huh. So I just switch this over to the uh, microphone array uh -huh. at right. my computer. Okay. That's always fun. I know, troubleshooting. That so is. if I found sound like crap, that's that's just <laughs> Windows for you. Yeah, no, actually, you sound good now. Okay, and I am hardwired in, so that should. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, should do it. So what's up, man? Yo, how are you? It's been a minute. Yeah, it has. It's been. Let's see. The last Q and A was December. I think, December. I yep. 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 It was that long ago. And then I got really busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because then award season decided to start up. Um, yeah. Let's see. I Sundance. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then we went immediately into Sundance, which I'm right. still working on all those reviews. So that's <laughs> just fun. Right. I didn't think my first Sundance review was going to be Judas and the Black Messiah. <laughs> I, I thought it would have been Coda or, right. uh, um, oh, land i guess i don't know oh yeah 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 i mean those are all uh those are all interesting to check out um we uh so we did sundance um i did south by southwest which let me tell you we're recording this huh um, yeah I'll be just for that. so i can put this up on youtube later yeah yeah of course of course um no i actually i have a few videos where we where we talked about sundance and it was uh it was an interesting experience i think um or at least I hope there were a lot of lessons that they learned um, from this virtual experience. It wasn't nearly as coordinated as Sundance was. The platform wasn't quite as intuitive. Um, and the selection uh, of films also wasn't quite the caliber that I was hoping for. Um, anyway, I have, we have videos on that and, you know, if people want to check that out, they're on YouTube, but. Uh, yeah, but, um, I think I linked to your stuff yeah um, thank you at the end of every post yeah yeah i appreciate that thing i think it might be the i'll have to go and check the links mm -hmm. but i think they're just the general movies for real dot net yes that's it i actually had to fix that because i realized i was doing movies for real dot com uh, and i went yeah. to a, a completely different site yeah so. you know what i what i realized like you know i'm a marketing person so consistency is important but i can't i couldn't find any open domains that was like uh for real like that that was just kind of the for real name all yeah. of them were taken and unfortunately they're taken by people who aren't even doing anything with them <laughs> well yeah like i'm still uh i i have to get back to twitter support because they said yeah. they had changed i i there's this guy who had the at Austin B Media account, mm -hmm. but oh, he was really? just he was just sitting in on it. So behind the scenes, uh -huh. um, I was like, "Well, this is obviously a copyright infringement because mm -hmm. he has my name, I have the URL. Mm -hmm. He's just sitting on it." 
mm-hmm. and he's not doing anything with the name. Right. So they agreed, okay, we'll give you the at Austin B Media thing, but as you see on my Twitter account, it's still at Austin B Tweets, so I got to get back to them. I don't know what's going on there. Oh, man, um, frustrating. But yeah, Very that's why the, uh, yeah, that's why I checked, uh, did dot media um, mm-hmm. because I was just like, yeah. okay, this is just a banner kind of thing Yeah, where it's unique enough to where um, when people visit it, it's like, oh, so it's just a dot com. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it was much more unique. And then it, it just kind of, it kind of said, okay, this is what, not the mission, because that's mm-hmm. kind of a weird marketing term. Mm-hmm. Uh I'm running up across a lot of those uh, in one of my books. Uh, mm-hmm. It's called, uh, have you read Everybody Writes by Ann Handley? Mm-mm. Highly recommend it. Yeah. Um, that's why that, that book is what allowed me to do that 1800, 1900 word review for Judas and the Black Messiah. And those, nice. one, and those uh, one sentence paragraphs, because I was just like, mm-hmm. because what I get caught up with is just, okay, how did my teacher back in sixth grade tell me to do it? And mm-hmm. I got to do it that way. Or how is Grammarly telling me to do it? You know, it's so it's so fascinating with writing and honestly, anything we learned in school. Um, it's kind of irrelevant. Yeah, <laughs> at this point. very much. Um, I, mean, I remember there was a certain number of sentences you had to have in a paragraph for it to be a paragraph. You had yeah. to do everything grammatically correct. And, 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 uh, and there wasn't, oh, uh, there, there wasn't any deviation from standard formatting of like sourcing and stuff like that. And now you get on the internet and everyone does it differently. Yeah, uh, everyone. <laughs> so I, I guess what, what the one thing that I did learn in school that still is, is relevant is just stay consistent. Whatever you're doing, just stay consistent with it. And I think that's all that the internet has of us. <laughs> yeah. And, um, the one thing I've learned really recently, uh, especially when I went into my Judas and Black Messiah review, which, mm-hmm. you know, took three days mm-hmm. to do, like just, okay, um, what's the main idea? What are the strengths, weaknesses, and unique ideas? Mm-hmm. There's actually, I might share this link with you. Um, there's this Australian college. They have this, uh, I think they I don't know why they have this online, uh, but they have, it's all called the structure of a critical review. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what my outline is. It's it's, it's all use. Okay. What's that main idea? What are the Mm -hmm. strengths, weaknesses, unique Mm -hmm. ideas and go from there. And then, um, oh, and then what's the, my final say or final Mm -hmm. word. Um, In fact, I'm writing my Falcon and the Winter Soldier episode two review. Nice. Um, which I'm, I don't, I'm not going to spoil anything in that review. Mm-hmm. At, although I've seen that uh, spoiled <laughs> at several other places and kind of makes me mad just yeah. because I'm like, hey, the thing in the embargo says, no, mm-hmm. you're not supposed to do that. So it's kind of frustrating um, because we live in an era where people want to get information out so quickly um, that they don't consider um, whether spoiling something is appropriate or not. Um, I, and I just, I keep spoilers offline. I, I think that there is a statute of limitation um, and you kind of gauge that on a case by case basis based on the media and stuff. But like the week of, like when I'm writing reviews, I, I don't do spoiler reviews um, unless I know it's going to an audience that's seen it. Yeah. Like there's there's no point in writing a review to get people interested in a movie if you spoil it. Yeah. <laughs> and I was talking to my mom about this. And mm. when I saw this spoiler review from an outlet that shall not be named, um, <laughs> but it's one I really like. Um, and I was just like, okay, if you're spoiling something, it's not a critique at that point. You're just mm-hmm. kind of recapping and saying what you thought of that specific plot point. Mm-hmm. Right. And, oh, yeah, that's a valid point. Um, yeah, you know, I actually came across this one movie. Um, I'm not actually like formally attending Cinequest, but mm-hmm. I ended up requesting um, a screener link for a film uh, called A Hard Problem. And I've heard of that one. 
Yeah, so it world premiered at CineQuest uh, a week ago. Okay. Um, and so I watched it and reviewed it while I was actually covering South by Southwest. Um, and it's an interesting premise, um, but when I was writing the review, the movie is structured in a, in a, in a very, not strange, but like different way. Like I think the first third of the film is, is kind of one thing. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, yeah. The first third of the film it's is a little kind of bright like, outside. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, the first third of the film is one thing, and then the second, um, like half of it, is a different thing. But um, I didn't want to spoil that first third because it was kind of a mystery thing, like yeah. world building, piecing it together. And the second half of the film, you get all the information, and it's and it's put out there, so it's not a mystery the whole time. But I had to find a way to talk about that second half of the film without revealing what happened in the first half. Yeah, and that's, you know, what took me so long with Judas and the Black Messiah. I eventually had to just say, you know what? It's a historical event. Mm, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it, there's no way I can not do this review without spoiling it. Right. Because otherwise it's just a thing of, okay, how do I skirt around the plot mechanics without talking about the plot mechanics mm -hmm. right um because in that film uh very much the plot mechanics are the characters and the characters are the plot mechanics and it's just okay i can't review it at that point right it, because uh, yeah and i it kind of hurt my heart to do that but i was like you know what i because i normally don't mm -hmm. um but i was just like there's no other way there's absolutely no other way. Right, right, right. And I think it turned out good. Oh, hey, actually, speaking of film festivals, have you uh, have you applied to Hot Docs yet? Uh, no, I haven't. You should do that. Okay, I'll look, I'll uh, send the email. I'm pretty sure it's happening at the end of April. Um, okay. I'm tentatively covering uh, the Seattle International Film Festival. Oh, okay. Um, tentatively cover covering the Seattle International Film Festival, which is interesting because when I usually, because I usually go to the to the festival, um, mm -hmm. it's you know right down the street, um, and it's always exciting to go because it's like, oh great, I get to see all the stuff that was at uh, Sundance and South by and yeah. TIFF, and uh, well, I went to those, <laughs> yeah, and so I'm seeing a lot of familiar titles, which is great. It's nice that um, that they are getting films that ha that you know, um, performed well at these festivals. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's been interesting going along the film festival, um, the film festival trail and and just kind of seeing how all these film festivals work in conjunction with each other. So uh, yeah, so South, uh, so Seattle National Film Festival is next for me and then I applied for Hot Docs, hopefully yeah. that works out. Uh, but yeah, you should do it. Did you uh, apply for CAN? Not yet. I need to. I, I, was, I was applying and then I was just like, oh my goodness, this form is so long. Yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> it was just like, write a paragraph about why you want to cover things and explicitly talk about it. And I'm like, okay, so this is an essay. This is going to have to wait till like mm -hmm. closer, closer to it because Dang. I'm not about to write an essay on a day where I have reviews to file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about time bounds. In fact, shoot, I should probably do that soon because uh, I'm going to start getting really busy here pretty soon. Yeah, it, it, it's funny. My uh, Back in October, I said, uh, oh, yeah, things will be less busy um, after AFI Fest. And then <laughs> award season decided to start back in right. November. <laughs> and award season is still going on to like uh -huh. the end of April. Right. Um, I'm still cementing Oscar plans. I mm -hmm. write for this other site uh, that's way bigger than me uh, mm -hmm. called uh, Sif Pop. And they're like, hey, yeah. why don't you come and do it here? And I'm like, also like, uh, but I'd have to pay for a hotel. I don't know. Right. And I mean, it's cheap, but I'm also like, I could be writing in that. Yeah time and i'm just like mm -hmm. i don't know I, I probably will just to get out of the office well quote mm -hmm. unquote office quote unquote a, office we all have our home offices <laughs> yeah like i just um uh, 
where I live, we have like a clubhouse and I just work out of there. Nice. And, and uh, that, that's nice because it doesn't have desks, but it has like mm-hmm. tables like you expect in church. Mm-hmm. Um, and I could yeah. just set up my monitor there, but, but I don't know it, because I'm looking at the list because I'm like, I've seen all these movies. I saw mm-hmm. Promising Young Woman. I own it Great. actually. Yeah. 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 Nice. Um, I, the father's out now. Um, yes, it is. Yep. I wish it was a little cheaper. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, because when I saw it was uh, available for rental, uh, I was like, okay, cool. And then I forgot, oh, now everything is 20 bucks um, day one. So that's fun. That's funny. You said, um, okay, cool. And Google thought you were talking to it. Yeah. I, I was looking <laughs> over and, and, uh, and mine started doing it. I was like, yeah. come on. Uh, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I should have a review of that soon. Uh, because um, I kind of, no, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I think that that's cool. Um, uh, since we last talked, um, I guess there's a lot that has come out since uh, since then. Yeah. I, have you been able to keep up with stuff? I I, no, let me I push, pull up letterboxed. Yeah, I pushed through this the Zack Snyder's Justice League. Yeah, I'm not reviewing that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you saw that, but uh, I am not no. reviewing that. Not not because I, I not out yeah. of spite, uh-huh. but I think fundamentally it is still the same movie that we uh-huh. got back in 2017. Now I know there are two other hours, but I think that's just because you just get backstory. Yeah, did you did you end up watching it? I did. No, um, no you did, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not gonna watch the Justice of Grey edition that came out yeah. because I don't wanna watch a four hour movie twice. Why, I just don't understand. Like, why do you think people want to endure that movie? So, I mean, I guess I, I I struggle between supporting an artist, mm-hmm. um, an artist's vision, and then, but also supporting the self-indulgence. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't know. Like I, I'm, I've never really been the biggest fan of Zack Snyder. Um, I've always said he's all visuals, very little story, mm-hmm. um, which isn't always the case. Uh, yeah. But I, 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 I figure a lot of times that it is. Um, and he's just always so visually oriented that the story, and and the entertainment value of it kind of falls mm-hmm. through a lot in his projects, um, and I think that that's how I felt about this justice this Justice League rehash. And a lot of people are like giving it are inflating its credit because it's better than Whedon's version. Yeah, which we all can agree with. Like Whedon's yeah. version was 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 not good. Um, yeah, if you go to uh, YouTube, especially, you'll see like Whedon cut versus Snyder cut yeah. like comparisons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, if you like the Wheaton cut, cool, whatever. Um, it's two hours shorter, so that's one thing to like. Um, but the, the Snyder cut, it it's better in the sense that it does um, it, it 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 capitalizes on on Snyder's signature style of filmmaking. Yeah. So um, I think that I appreciate that, but you know, the four hour thing just so unnecessary. Yeah. You know? I, yeah, like I think they should have went with the original idea. I think the mini series idea was the better option. That would have been great, and and it's the time for it right now. You know, I felt I actually started uh, rewatching Watchmen last night, and it's funny because it's it's been almost a decade since I've last seen it. But uh, I played and I was watching through it. Um, I had a couple drinks, and then I I was like, man, I'm pretty far into this movie. I wonder how close I am to the end. And I was all. <laughs> I was only about 90 minutes in and I realized it's a two hour and 45 minute movie. I'm like, Jesus, Snyder, can you give us a break? <laughs> but like, but I, I, I say that because I think that Watchmen, and I, I think they did make a, a TV series, but that yeah. uh, Snyder's version of Watchmen would have been great as a mini series. And yeah. I mean, that's that already kind of happened and I don't think that that turned out really well. So this would have been a good opportunity to take Snyder's vision for a project and extend it over a period of time where the entertainment value doesn't um, doesn't weigh on the runtime, you know. Like yeah. You can and and it's broken up that way too. Like the chapters. Yeah. Are pretty much a mini series thing. Like you could just make that's each chapter. What I, yeah, that's what I didn't episode. get. I was like, oh, so you just left the title cards in? Did you not like go into edit bay and oh, yeah. <laughs> delete MP4? 
Right. Like, I guess I just don't, I didn't even see that if you were going to make a continuous movie, I didn't see the need for them, really. Yeah. Um, like, they just, just like this break to say, oh, here's the next line someone's going to say. And yeah. And you, you were always like waiting for that line to be said. No, and I mean this—it's kind of a cool thing. A, a lot of entertainment does that. I was—I was actually. Um, I'm also watching Wayne on Amazon Prime, um, and that does that. But Wayne's actually a really good show. I'm, uh, Is it that show in. with that kid? Yeah. And, okay. Yeah, I think I know what you're that about. show with that kid. Anyone who watched <laughs> it. <laughs> get, get, I, I I know there's like a better way to describe it, but like in my head, I'm thinking like '90s kid, but not. Yeah. Like that kind of quirky '90s. It, you know, what's interesting is actually it takes place after the '90s. It feels '90s. I, I, and when I first started watching it, I was like, "Oh, this must be like a '90s era kind of show." But then they reference Lord of the Rings, and I'm like, "Hmm, that movie came out in 2001." Yeah. <laughs> so that kind of offset the timeline for, uh, a little bit. But, but anyway, it, so that show does it. at the beginning of every show. It's chapter X, and then you know the line that's going to be said. And I actually I think the favorite did it as well. Um, yeah, uh, Lanthimos. Uh, I didn't so finish it, but yeah. Oh, I got to see that at Biff. I sat in the theater for that one. That was I, awesome. I a tried long one. twice and I couldn't get through it. I was just like, look, I get what you're going for here, but I can't. I can't ride. I'm not on your wavelength. I can't go here where you're trying to go. You know, thinking, yes, and I get that because when I saw it, um, I felt that same way. It, granted, it was at, I was actually attending the festival and it was the fourth movie of the day um in vancouver uh and yeah. so it was a long day i'd seen a bunch of movies and then it's like 11 o'clock at night and we're on like chapter 17 and i'm like oh my gosh are we done <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it, it's the... another chapter i don't want another chapter i want to wrap yeah. this up <laughs> um but i i think i need to revisit that one at, at yeah i probably I, I, I probably just need to pick like a saturday just lock myself in a room somewhere and say, okay, I'm not coming out till I finish this thing because I do right. like uh, his other movies. Well, mm -hmm. um, well, maybe not. Killing a Sacred Deer was not my wavelength either. Yeah, um, he, he has a very interesting style. Signature, I mean, if we're talking about uh, uh, filmmakers with signature styles, he definitely has a clear one. Um, but, uh, and, and that's just what it is. It's kind of slow, it's droning, it's, but it's, it's story i think it's it's interesting storytelling yeah um which is what i think is important and that's why i'm like willing to go back and revisit some of these movies that i might not have been in the mood for at the time um because you know what it, i think my problem is with the what's that? The, uh, the killing of a sacred deer and the favorite uh -huh. i think they're too boisterous uh, or too loud where the lobster and mm. the guy who worked with them who mm. did the film apples Mm -hmm. oh uh, which, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, those are very quiet films very quiet uh, apples yeah that was a super quiet film um and it's another one that's like it, it's very interesting because i think that these these are movies that i have to be in the right mood for but i haven't determined yeah. what mood that is <laughs> so i have no idea when it's like a good time to sit like i'm appreciating well, it but like when is the time right well like i saw killing of a sacred deer opening night i was the mm -hmm. only one there wow uh and i'm like oh like i i think the first time i watched it i was like okay i'm 10 minutes till the end i can go it's getting mm. late mm -hmm. uh like it's getting late i have to call it uber mm -hmm. that kind of deal right. um but i did wa end up watching the whole thing later um mm -hmm. and nice. it did not change my opinion about that movie <laughs> Because right. it was just like, okay, so he's supposed to be this, but mm -hmm. but it doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I think that those those movies aged with me um, better the more that I talk about them. Because I think looking back on my experience with the favorites, it's like you know, I. I I kind of forget the things that made me like really bored with it just because it has been so long. And I just remember the things that were that that stood out and I appreciated. Um, so I do need to, to revisit that. But oh boy, that was a long sidetrack from Snyder. Um, no worries. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess that's just on the subject of artists who have a very sign signature style um, it, it, and, and they stick to it. And, and that's you know, I guess that's something to be admired. I just, yeah. I guess I don't, 
I want entertainment to be entertaining, right? Yeah. And not all of it has to be, but I think of, of uh, filmmakers who have mastered that, I think, like, like Nolan, yeah. who knows how to tell a good story, who knows how to create good characters, but also knows how to make it uh, viable in the mainstream. Uh, yeah. Like, I love what he does with his films, and you know that you're going to get a quality film that also appeals to the masses. So, yeah. and I think Snyder aims for that every time. Um, it just doesn't doesn't quite hit it. Actually, I don't think he aims for the masses at all. Um, no. Maybe he's working with the wrong people. <laughs> um, cons- because, consi- like, considering the stuff he implies in Justice League, uh, yeah, ju- I'll just call it Justice League for shorthand. Um, uh-huh. That is very specific comic book stuff that. Yeah especially considering a certain M character mm-hmm. that nobody is going to understand unless right. they've read a comic book. Right. Like, Which, and you know what? Maybe Snyder, I, I don't know. Maybe he's he aims these stories in the wrong direction. Maybe instead of, um, you know, trying to make it a blockbuster, maybe that should have been something that did the film festival circuit. Yeah. Um, you know, I because I do sense that kind of storytelling. And it's so funny. You know, I was talking with my brother about this. And when, when Watchmen came out, I remember all the buzz about how, like, raunchy it is and, like, how, like, how excessive it can be. And um, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, according yeah. to today's standards, I mean, a decade ago, I, I guess, because at that time we had things like Sin City coming out. Um, and uh, Grindhouse and, um, you know, there, there were some, some kind of edgy films coming out at that time. I mean, even 300 was, um, was billed as like one of the most violent movies pushing the boundaries of rated R. And you go back and watch 300 now and it's like, no, that's on like YouTube now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it was just a prank. I didn't mean to kick you off the ledge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah funny stuff but um yeah. but yeah so anyway i don't know mainstream stuff um i guess i also uh ended up watching uh the little things which was another hbo max oh how is that it's a movie okay um <laughs> i i had a few conversations about it on podcasts and uh and with friends and it's like i wanted it to be better than it was i don't think it's bad I think the consensus is it's not bad. It's just not great either, or at least not as good as it could have been. Does so. Jared Leto deserve his nomination? <laughs> he, I think Leto always deserves the nomination. It's just a matter of, is he framed right in the movie? And I don't think, this is another, like, this is, I think this is another case where his character was, um, was, uh, was, uh, was kind of cut short by editing. Okay. Uh, not cut short, but like so it, it, it was editing sold that character short. Um, okay. Unfortunately, because he did a good performance, but it's just not menacing enough because the story um, doesn't allow it to be right. Okay. So. You know. And to you, be you fair, can, you can I tell am... he's you can tell he's working for that Oscar, but yeah. <laughs> and like to be fair, I am super excited for his Morbius. Because I grew up with the blue Morbius that had like a trench jacket oh, yeah. on. Right. And was like, hey, Spider Man. <laughs> and like, that would be totally something Jared Leto would do. Right. And I would be okay with them fully going that direction. Mm-hmm. Um, y- yeah, but you know what? I think. Um... I think superhero films and comic book adaptations are starting, or not starting, but have really learned how to take a more realistic approach. Because when you think about comic book uh, characters in like the 90s and, and before, they're almost, they're like very caricature kind of adaptations, things yeah. that like they're trying to literally translate the comics into yeah. film form. And, you know, maybe that was okay entertainment for then, but we, we do have a better understanding of what's um visual style and visual art we want in our in our cinema um and i like i like the direction that those things have gone and it's nice to bring more realistic um and uh and uh live action i guess kind of um uh 
visual art to these to these you know kind of outlandishly drawn <laughs> cartoons yeah <laughs> it, you know there's been some really cool stuff I, I i forget the last one i watched where i could oh i think wandavision is a good example oh okay let's talk about wandavision because okay you want to you want to discuss something that has not aged well with me oh really <laughs> okay here's the thing about wandavision um and this seems to be the case i mean uh, uh winter soldier is following the same uh kind of uh formula but wandavision had a fantastic concept when it started. Yeah. The, the idea of replicating sitcoms and TV mm -hmm. was brilliant and yeah. done so well, so convincing. It's like this stuff could have actually happened in the time that, that it was happening. But what WandaVision ended up doing was, uh, was just this like, this very egregious entertainment bait and switching um, where, she where it would pitch something and then backtrack um it's okay, pitching yeah. these these tv show these tv episodes and you think that that's what the show is is these replications of tv but then you get to the end and realize oh okay well it was just kind of her making it up and we're getting back to the normal uh marvel stuff yeah and okay i mean you could kind of see that, that it was going in that direction which is fine but then you get things like quicksilver and yeah that uh annoyed me i enjoyed that troll i enjoyed I did, it I mean, so much <laughs> i like i i we're all like hanging on uh, on pins and needles waiting for when are the x-men going to show up when is when are the x-men going to cross over when is all these fox properties that are now uh, attained by disney when are those going to show up in all these projects and that Um, or for or something and Quicksilver shows up and it's the X-Men version um, like that was that was so wondering at that point because they made us wait week to week uh, to watch each episode you're wondering okay where are you going from here and to get to that final episode and realize oh you just used the actor you literally just recasted Pietro yeah um, that was that was that was I think they think it was fan service, but I think it was cruel. <laughs> the quote I, I because I do I have read some interviews with the guy or uh -huh. yeah it is Matt Shackman, um, and he's just like we use that because it was a metaphor for Wanda to like her grief is tricking her into thinking wanting to believe that this is the actual Quicksilver, mm -hmm. and we. But, and we know, hey, that's a Quicksilver, not mm -hmm. our Quicksilver. And it's kind of like a metaphor for that. Like her grief yeah, tricked her into that. Like, I get that. I, I understand the concept, but um, I don't agree with it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for I'm ready for X-Men. I'm ready for X-Men to show up. And every project is like, okay, the MCU is going to take another step. Oh man, my dog. I'm yeah. gonna take a minute. But the the MCU is taking another step forward and incorporating more projects, more characters, and at some point we have to do this crossover, right? Um, but so far, Phase Four. If you were to put a subtitle to Phase Four, it would be called Bait and Switch, because yeah. even with Far From Home, um, when um, yeah. when Mysterio shows up and says, "I'm from the multiverse," I'm like, "It's about time we get the multiverse." just to find out i have a theory about that oh okay well give me give me one second okay yeah Hold on. I have to take care of this dog yeah sorry dogs are being super needy um, no worries yeah it, the the phase four would be called bait and switch because the multiverse came up and didn't happen um pietro came up uh, from x-men and that didn't happen uh wandavision was supposed to be the prequel to the multiverse of madness mm -hmm. and that didn't show up um so uh i like where is dr strange like where is the x-men where yeah. what is happening um and, and I guess, so what I, and what I was saying about like the bait and switch thing um, and how uh, Cap, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier is kind of following that is because it seems like these, these Disney plus TV shows are really kind of like, they're putting a lot of their value on the end of the episode. 
Yeah. Right. Like they're really they're they're pulling these punches at the end of the episode to keep people watching, but at, at least in Wandavision, those punches ultimately didn't mean anything. And if, if I had to say it, a, a harsh criticism about Falcon and the Winter Soldier, mm-hmm. um, is that it doesn't it just skips over important things mm-hmm. and expects you to keep up. And I'm like, mm-hmm. like at, at the beginning of the series. You're like, oh, so none of Endgame mattered because why? I yeah. I don't like the shield thing is what I'm mm-hmm. talking about. Oh like, yeah, like okay, why is there a backtrack on this? Mm-hmm. Like it feels like some kind of it feels like a like you said a bait and switch of like mm-hmm. hey we're gonna pull you along this rope mm-hmm. to get you to watch all six episodes mm-hmm. uh, because I pretty much guaranteed by episode four or five he's getting that shield back yeah Uh, exactly like what is i mean i don't even know what his problem with keeping the shield is like captain america told him to keep the shield i'd be like thanks bruh and i uh great i'm not donating it to i'm gonna hang that shit up on my wall and (laughs) i uh i uh realized something yesterday when i was re-watching episode two because i was trying to like okay what is the connective thread here um the main thing that absolutely angered me that I couldn't talk about because it was a big, well, not big. Oh, I haven't, spoiler. Seen, I haven't seen the episode yet. I was busy No, watching. this is talking okay. about episode one. Okay, episode one. Cool, I did see that. Uh, is that Rhodey shows up and is like talking to him about, hey, it's a shame no one's going to have that shield. And he's talk like they're talking and it's never a question of like, hey, I I'm I was uh, called the discount Iron Man or Black Iron Man or like that would have been a much more meaningful conversation if the two just said, hey, we are two black people that are taking on the mantle that was passed down to us, and <sighs> there was no conversation there. It is interesting that the show is taking on race as a social issue. Um, I know that that came up in the first episode, uh, and I, I haven't seen the second episode or if they followed through with that kind of theme. Um, but I, I don't know. I guess it's I, I, I'm spending a lot of phase four thinking, okay, something good is about to happen, or okay, they're going somewhere, or okay, we just need to get where they're going. And it's entirely possible that the pandemic kind of messed things up, you know, with Black Widow not coming out in time, um, shows being pushed back, movies being pushed back. So maybe- email. Yeah. Black Widow. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) I got in my drafts waiting. Nice, nice. Um, Maybe we're just waiting for, maybe all the waiting would have paid off by now if everything had come out on time. Um, But- uh, I, I I hate when I'm strung along, um, yeah. and it's and it there's no end in sight for that, um, and so we will see. Phase four is going to really help shape how I view the MCU because at this point for me the MCU the MCU is complete for me. You know, you yeah. start with Iron Man and end with Endgame. That's the that's that is the perfect MCU arc that yeah. I can live happy with and know that, I mean, it's like Lord of the Rings, right? You have the three uh, Lord of the Rings movies and those will always live forever and eternity as in my book, the greatest movies ever. Um, but then but then they went and made The Hobbits and it's like, you know what, those don't count. Yeah, especially <laughs> the third one. Totally, especially the third one. I didn't see it. I'm not wasting my time on it. The first two were a Good idea. Yeah, so those don't count, but I will always have the Lord of the Rings and nothing that comes out after that, including this Amazon show that's that they're trying to produce. Uh, hopefully that comes out good, but if not, I still have Lord of the Rings, right? So whatever the MCU decides to do from phase four on, it, you know, maybe it turns out to be garbage. Maybe they do lose their way and the magic just isn't sustainable and they just have <laughs> this one arc. Literally. That yeah, exactly, right? Maybe they just had this one arc that worked for three phases. And you know what? I can live happy with that. And nothing that they make is going to ruin that. Although it can ruin everything else after it. So Yeah, and the general feeling I have for phase four is phase four should have been phase three. Oh, well, yeah. Maybe because sure. like WandaVision would make much more sense if it came directly after Age of Ultron. And right. the Falcon yeah. and the Winter Soldier would have made much more sense if it came in between like civil war 
like right after Civil War or something like well, that. Well, WandaVision would be interesting because that they had phase three to develop the relationship between Wanda and Vision. So maybe, yeah, I guess I can see where you're coming from, but it's like I, just I from the Quicksilver would, stuff. Yeah, and yeah, the Quicksilver stuff. Yeah, because Quicksilver hasn't hasn't been a part of the stories. Because for, it's for almost like WandaVision is acting like she's still holding in all these grief after let's see nine no it's 2023 in the mcu so eight years for quicksilver and then let's see six years for vision i think because i think infinity war took place in 2017 Mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah, that's right um but then there's like i get grief but like Mm -hmm. i feel like her attempt to (laughs) create vision would have happened a lot earlier that's nothing. Talk to Wonder Woman. She's been grieving for 66 <laughs> years. <laughs> Dude, if if I I tried really hard with that review to not just be like the plot it it's non-existent. It doesn't make sense. It there's not like especially especially in like since just the Zack Snyder's Justice like getting back to that a little bit. Right. They don't even like try to revise it and be like, well, I have been uh, doing things as Wonder Woman for these years and I have moved on from Steve Trevor, but it's like, but, but they didn't even attempt to ADR that out at least or shoot new scenes with that. Like, you know what? Like I, this was a conversation I was also having with my brother um, about the DCEU and just how fractured it is. I don't even I don't even know if I if I am keeping up with a DCEU anymore. I think at this point we're just making movies yeah. um, in, in, with Warner Brothers and DC because they um, I, I guess they're still making Wonder Woman movies. Are Aquaman movies in play? I don't yeah. know. Okay, so they're still making one, but you know. They're filming uh, at the end of next year? This year? Yeah. I mean, Ben Affleck isn't Batman anymore, so there's that. There's never, uh, um, at least I don't know of any projects for Flash and Cyborg. There's a uh, Flashpoint, and Cyborg's uh, plant movie pretty much got scrapped as soon as he said, I will never work with DC as long as Hamada's there. Yeah, okay, well, there's that. So what DCEU are we talking about? I think that there were some core <laughs> movies. There was uh, Man I Steel. think we're talking Elseworlds, basically. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So... I don't know. And DC is also making, like, can you imagine, um, uh, like, Iron Man um, movies in the MCU, but then another Iron Man movie that doesn't have Robert Downey Jr. coming out, like, at the same time? Like, the parallel franchises, you know, I mean, Joker was great, but, like, you guys had Jared Leto. You know, why are you producing another Joker movie at the same time that you're trying to peddle this Jared Leto uh, Joker? Yeah. you know, Batman was recast, and I hope, you know, Pattinson pulls it off. I do like him as an actor, Um, but uh, I don't know. I I never saw Shazam, but is that at all connected? Okay. It's, it's sort of connected, like. I know, like, like, uh, the the first Suicide Squad, I mean, then that got rebooted with some of the same characters, like, I just don't know. (laughs) And, like, with the same exact actors playing them, too, it's like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so now they're in the seventies, and these people exist. Yeah, what's what is happening to timelines and and continuity and consistency? Well, ooh, maybe I have I have a theory that would spoil Suicide Squad, but oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we can we can talk about that another time. But uh, the new Suicide Squad trailer just came out, and it looks good. I just am I don't care about trying to attach it to the to the uh, DCEU. Um, and there was discussion about like, oh, the we should make the Snyderverse, right, with DC. Yeah. Movies. And I'm like, yeah. let's let's not. You know what? It would be way more expensive to do that. It than... would. It'd be it'd be expensive, and you have to plan beyond all the projects that they already have. Yeah. Um. And and that's I think that planning that far ahead is a good idea. I just don't think DC and Warner Brothers have that kind of forethought. Um. I think that Justice League, uh, the Snyder Cut is really just kind of a, a very expensive resume point for uh, yeah. for Snyder. And my, I guess my hope is that maybe a different studio picks him up um, for some other kind of gritty um, 
uh, edgy franchise and that he's able to take the same vision of Snyder versing the DC EU and take that to a different property and let them fund that in its own way and plan that in its own way. Have we learned where Nolan is now? Like what home studio home he's at? Oh, we haven't, but I'm sure physically he's probably on some island that he bought enjoying Mai Tais and quarantining oh, with I, all his money. <laughs> yeah, like, because, I mean, after his scathing editorial about HBO Max, mm-hmm. yeah, he pretty much, like, said, I'm looking for other studios to pick up my stuff. Right, yeah, and I'm sure there 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 is interest somewhere. Um, and, and uh the reason I ask about Nolan is I'm pretty sure wherever Nolan goes, Snyder will go also. Hmm, isn't it? They're, I don't know. They're friends. I don't know, I don't know if a studio can afford both, but <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, ho- hold on one second. My, my high yep. maintenance dogs are needing me. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, no worries. I mean, that's great that they're friends. I think Snyder has some uh, things to learn from Nolan. Um, but I think Nolan, I, I, I have this, I have, again, I'm on the fence about uh, filmmakers as artists when they are very committed to the art, but so committed that they um, rub people the wrong way. Yeah. Scorsese is really good at this. He <laughs> he, he drops editorial uh, articles, and I don't think he he's ill intentioned, or even that he he means things the way that I interpret that he means them. Yeah. Um, but it just comes off as so like pompous and self indulgent. Like guys, I Scorsese, I know that you are old school. Keep being old school. Stop telling us that we can't. <laughs> yeah, you know, or that we have to be as well. Like, you do your thing, let us do ours, and stop telling us what cinema needs to be in your mind. Just make your cinema. Yeah, um, like the uh, funniest thing I came across on Snyder Cut Weekend was like somebody tell uh, Martin Scorsese that this is cinema. Oh man. <clears throat> But I guess, uh, so I guess the same goes for Nolan. As much as I love and revere Nolan, I love his projects. Um, he, he makes good movies, then I'll watch them. <clears throat> I'll, I'll watch anything that he makes. But when you when you do come out so publicly um, and, and try to, um, you know, talk bad about the studio that's funding your movies, um, like, I, 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 that's something that I struggle with because I want to support Nolan, um, but if you don't like the studio, go somewhere else. Why are you trying to drum up so much um, ill will towards the studio when you have the influence to do and go wherever you want? Like you're not a struggling filmmaker that needs the public support to change the established order. You can change the established. You put out a movie in the middle of a pandemic. (laughs) Yeah, like when most theaters are closed, you put a movie in theaters and insisted that that was the way that it had to go. Look, I respect it. Um, I did get to see it in theaters, so thank you for that. Um, but like, that's the kind of influence you have. Why are you so hung up on trying to discredit the studio when you can do whatever, almost whatever you want? Yeah, like he, I would have even been fine with like doing that 1999 rental thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, sure, I would have. Or, or you, you know, virtual cinema or whatever. Yeah, 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 I get that. I, that's another thing that I struggle with because I, I see the studio's perspective on it, but also um, I think I would rather, I, I, I'm i interested in what the HBO Max and, and Warner Brothers deal is going to, how that's gonna shake out. They've committed to this year of free new movies, day and date release. Um, mm-hmm. Like, what is the result of that? Like, what? How, how are you measuring success with that? Yeah, like, I, if it's anything like how Netflix does it, I'm sure, I hope HBO Max isn't doing this. I really, really hope they're not doing this. But Netflix says, okay, anyone who watches the first minute of anything has now watched the this thing and yeah 
I hope HBO Max is like, no, they've got to g- hit the credits. Well, before. you know, honestly, I, I mean, I'm sure um, these streaming services, they need the numbers to look impressive, right? And yeah. so that's, I can see where they'll be like, okay, if you watch like 10 minutes of a movie, then, you, then it counts as a view. Um, yeah, like, what was it? Like, Disney's really bad at about about this. Like they'll say, "Falcon and the Winter Soldier is the most viewed thing on Disney Plus ever," mm-hmm. and they said the same thing about Raya and the Last Dragon. And I'm like, mm-hmm. "Okay, what are your numbers?" Mm-hmm. And then a third party comes out and says, "Yeah, no, that ain't mm-hmm. right." Like, oh, what was it? Right. Anten- Antenna uh, came out with a report that said it did worse than Mulan. Oh well, yikes. Um, but. Uh, I'm sure I, that's mainly because, um, which I did see, um, yeah. and it's okay. I, I'll get to reviewing it sometime. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, you know, and this is kind of where I, I struggle with the with the premium price of like, um, of digital or, or virtual cinema, is I, you know, I, I shelled up the thirty dollars for Mulan and. I, you know, we've talked about that. That was junk. Yeah. Um, and it just put a really bad taste in my mouth for spending $30 on a film. Uh, so I have not seen Raya and the Last Dragon, and I will not until it's in a more affordable space or free on on uh, on Disney+. Plus. Which yeah, it's, is, it's kind of frustrating because I'm pretty sure Black Widow is also going to premium access. Yep. Um, and Cruella. And Cruella. I will and, not. And... Uh... I think Luca is going to be just Disney Plus without any additional fee. Like, I don't know. Um, I hope that Disney gets out of that. Um, yeah. And, and maybe they won't because they, I know that they, obviously the pandemic has hit Disney as a corporation really hard. Um, yeah. And being an entertainment industry and, um, you know, a lot of that being closed. Um, but I think that like the the twenty dollars to view the thirty dollars to view like they're that that's just that's just too high um, yeah if, if it was five dollars or or even ten dollars i'd buy into it 12 bucks ma- match the price of a movie ticket right? yeah like or even i and i think we've even even talked about this like just have a premium access tier mm-hmm. yeah absolutely I, yes we did talk about that look i will pay a couple extra dollars a month if i can get I'm gonna very begrudgingly say this because I spend a lot on <laughs> well, streaming services. I can have you, cable. <laughs> you're talking to the you are uh, you were talking to the guy who uh, bef- uh, middle of the pandemic said maybe like movies should take a year off and has <laughs> it has instantly regretted it. Right. <laughs> I, I look back on the article and said, okay, yikes. Mm-hmm. I, I want movies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I know that when you when you say stuff that you don't actually mean, uh, I'll begrudgingly say this, but I would pay a few extra dollars a month to get free access. I, You know, there's a meme online um, with that that Drake meme where he's like, nah, yeah. <laughs> right. And it's uh, it's for Amazon. And I think this is very this might just be a millennial or a new age kind of way of thinking. But like buying something with five ninety nine shipping. No way. How dare you. But buying something and paying twelve dollars <laughs> to get it shipped for Prime for free. It's like, yeah, that's a great thing, yeah. <laughs> you know? And that's exactly how I feel. Like um, if I want to buy something on Amazon without my husband, like if I'm getting my husband a gift on Amazon, I don't want it popping up in our history. Like instead of like just buying it and paying the $6.99 for shipping, I would go get the subscription, yeah. $12 a month to get the free shipping. It's 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 really weird. So I, and I wish that, that, um, uh, that, streaming services would understand this i don't want yeah. to pay 30 dollars for a movie but i will pay more per month to get it for free yeah like even <laughs> like as long as it doesn't cost more than disney plus itself right 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 absolutely like, like I, I, I think it's there's... i think it's what is it eight bucks now mm-hmm. i think something like that it whatever add one dollar to the launch price mm-hmm and you know what? I mean, Disney Disney kind of made things super convoluted by doing the the uh, the bundle thing, because which is what I got. Yeah, I, I don't think I subscribe to that because I have 
a, a higher tier of Hulu. I don't have Hulu TV, but I have a higher tier of Hulu to not have ads, um, which isn't included in the bundle. So yeah, it's so, it it's so annoying. And then uh, what is what is even the point of ESPN Plus? Like I, I, it's corporate synergy. That is the only thing. How about, um, how about no, like. Guys. <laughs> uh, and that, I, I think we've also talked about this. Um, uh, I think they should just roll all of it into one. Yeah, I mean, that would be great. Just I, put Hulu, Disney Plus, and ESPN Plus all in one. Into one thing. And then that way you can, you can choose what tier of service you want in each one. I yeah. think that there is, <clears throat> there is opportunity to... Um, to have like a higher tier of Disney plus where you can get um, the new releases day and date release, you know, for free. Um, or, and then of course the tiers of Hulu that already exist. Um, and then give, give Disney plus or uh, ESPN plus some extra tiers because look, I want to keep up with sports, but ESPN and cable is expensive and I'm spending yeah. so much money on streaming. that I don't feel like also adding cable to that. Um, so and that, I, when, yeah. yeah. We'll get back to that, but um, I guess so, huh? Um, um, but no, uh, I was just gonna say that Peacock adding WWE is kind of interesting. Mm, yeah, because I thought Peacock was entirely pointless. <laughs> well, and you know, I saw the press release and I was like, oh man, this yeah. might be the thing. I don't like yeah. watch WWE, but like that would get me to watch WWE. Right, I, I, there is a, a very strong audience for WWE, right? Like, yeah. I'm not a part of it, but like wrestling and, and even with MMA, like these like combat uh, sports, there's a lot of, uh, of, uh, of support and fan base for that. So even though I'm not a part of it and it's not gonna win me over, it's a smart move to get yeah. something that has such a strong fan base, which I'm also gonna say begrudgingly because if every <laughs> service does this, um, and they have every streaming service has its niche. Um, before WWE, uh, I think it was The Office that was the Peacock selling point. Uh, and I was like, it, it's bad. It, it, yeah. Like if I go to the Peacock pricing uh -huh. uh, or plans page, it's just like, how much Office do you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and it's just have, like I can't all of it. Why wouldn't you just? Like, what do you mean? The office isn't, I mean, it has a fan base, but it's not that valuable to like make you, it's not like, you know. It, like, I'm not going to pay eight bucks a month for. Just to get the office. You, yeah. You know, I can just go buy those DVDs, right? Um, yeah. But, um, but I think that, uh, and then Paramount came out with a, a streaming service. Which I haven't used once. I have not hit play on it once. I have it installed on my phone. I can actually mm -hmm. show you. I have it installed on my phone right okay let's wait for boot up yeah oh well oh there it is yep Paramount i Plus. have it on my phone uh -huh. and i have not watched a single thing and it's just like so paramount plus i don't know <sighs> this i don't personally know the scope of, of paramount and what like channels they cover but i did oh, i was it? able to watch um some it, ncaa basketball um, on Paramount Plus, and that was like, oh, wow. so their little copy of the Disney Plus, you know, hubs mm -hmm. says CBS, BET, Comedy Central, MTV, Nickelodeon, and Smithsonian Channel. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I guess that makes sense. I think that there, there's a fan base for that stuff as well. We're we're just on the free trial, and honestly, yeah. I, I don't know if we're gonna um, if we're gonna continue with it. That's just another streaming service. It could and, be a Quibi. It could be a Disney Plus. Ah, I hope it's neither. <laughs> 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 I'm not gonna sign up for it. Quit and and no, no, I'm not either. Is, I, I'm I'm. I think we've reached, and I think we talked about this before. We've reached a, a critical point where. I, I don't see people continuing to add paid streaming services yeah. to their their lineup. If you could like me, because I'm signed up for, uh, you know, Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, Disney Plus, um, you know, and a myriad of other things, and it just adds up. Yeah. Um, I'm and I'm ready for a, some service to bundle these things. We can just get back to cable, but <laughs> on our phone, because <laughs> um, yeah. I, I want a little bit of a break uh, in the, you know in the pricing for all this stuff. And you know, Verizon's getting close to being do that. 
Um, because Ooh, I, don't I, want, I don't want this to be Verizon. <laughs> well, you will, yeah, like because I get Apple Music for free, I get I have to hook it up, but Discovery Plus for free, uh-huh. the Disney bundle for free. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think HBO Max, I put that six month lock in deal on that. Mm-hmm. Nice. Then Netflix. Oh, eight- that's right. I, I have HBO Max, but AT&T is paying for that for me. Um, and, uh, yeah, that, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not paying for Peacock. I, I do 4K Netflix. I'm not paying mm-hmm. for Paramount Plus. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Little Prime Video. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So there's there's a lot. And, and honestly, there's also more entertainment on any of these than we can ever get around to. I, I'm fortunate enough to have a friend who watches TV, uh, watches a lot of TV shows. And so he'll recommend the things that I, uh, that I, that he thinks I would like and check out. That's why I'm watching Wayne. He recommended okay. Wayne and I actually very much am enjoying that show. Um, <laughs> um I think the most, uh, other than MCU, I think the most recent thing I watched on that front, uh, just regular TV was a teacher. Um, um I watched it because Film Independent nominated it. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize we're only supposed to watch one episode. Mm-hmm. Um, or however, it, it's weird the way they're nominating things. Mm-hmm. Uh, not to go behind the scenes or anything on that, but um, it, it, it's, it, it, it's weird the way they're doing this TV category thing mm-hmm. uh, this year because like they've nominated Mangrove in the TV section. And, but there, yeah, it, it, there's just a lot of behind the scenes stuff that on that front, I'm like, I don't think if they do TV next year, I don't think I'll be participating. Yeah, yeah, because because it's just like I watched the teacher and I'm like, okay, how is this the best new television show? Yeah, how like there are so much better. That's not the word, mm-hmm. uh, but. Like I watched episode one, I'm like, okay, this is fine, but mm-hmm. I wouldn't say best. Like I have a really persnickety view of best mm-hmm. thing. Like when I think best, I'm like, okay, top of its class. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, this is fine, I guess, but like, it's really haphazardly put together. Yeah, and and that's just kind of not film independent. I think they're great, right. great stuff. I yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm mainly referring to a teacher. Oh, I see. Huh. Okay. Well. I don't have time for that. <laughs> so, I, you know, I when it yeah. comes to what is that? Is this the light? No, that's not the light. Oh, it, okay. Yeah, like I, I've I got saw a... this. I saw this glow in my background, and I'm like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got like windows on behind and to the left of me and in yeah, front of me. So yeah. that's why I look like I'm. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's cool. So um, I guess just in a very brief bit of personal news, um, uh, me and my husband uh, are moving forward with buying a house. Oh, right fun. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. There's this like shed that's outside that's not really being used for anything. And I think I'm going to turn that into my studio. So I will have a much cooler background, hopefully in about a month. Yeah. Like I, like I'll get on Q and A's and I'll have to like tip my laptop mm-hmm. screen so far back because it's yeah. just like, otherwise you see right outside. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of frustrating and you, you kind of want to have a, a space that you can dedicate to being able to do this and, and not have, you know, you know, like your, your personal space is the background, but. And, um, and it's, it's become the biggest obstacle for me doing the real awards this year. Mm-hmm. Because right. I, I'm rec- I'm trying to record and then mm-hmm. because it's the where I work is a public space, people keep yeah. coming in and I'm yeah, like yeah. that's why I have to keep apologizing for, for it being mm-hmm. postponed, but I'm like, uh I'm trying to record and then people just come in. And that's mm-hmm. also why you haven't seen a third podcast. Oh I is see. because like even though I have a it's a USB-C mic. It's pretty nice. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not the one I'm using now, as you can right. probably tell. <laughs> I thought about it. Right. Um, but it, it's just too uh, too much to put up uh, yeah, on, yeah, on a table that's literally pro- probably about, well, you can't see because green screen. Mm-hmm. 
but right. about twice my body, but mm-hmm. it's on a small table. Anyways, mm-hmm. sidetracked. Um, <laughs> but I'll try and record and people just come in and it's just like, okay, I, I get super perfectionist about my work. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, real words are coming. I just got to sit down and do them. Right. And, right, right. and it might end up being that I might just have to forgo the ceremony this year. Mm, right. Because it's just like, okay, there are things I want to do with it. I want to make it look professional. Like I, I have a lavalier I could put mm-hmm. on, mm-hmm. but like with the distance between the stage that we have up there and it, it the cord wouldn't reach. Oh, I see. Right. And, it, and it's just like, okay, well, I can't use my podcast mic either. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, oof. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's tough stuff. But yeah, that's what's going on with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that um, but otherwise, uh, I'm, I literally, on another tab here, I have mm-hmm. my Falcon and the Winter Soldier episode two review uh, sitting. Um, and then I, I don't know what I'll do next in terms of review. I'll probably mm-hmm. do the father, maybe. I don't know. It'll, it depends on what people want. Because, like, I have stuff from, like, you know, I, I generally like to wait until something's out to review it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's just like, okay, I could, but I always include, you've seen this, but yeah. I always include it's available on blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah blah service right. or you can rent it on your digital movie provider mm-hmm. and that's why you haven't seen like afi fest reviews of a, like of the father or mm-hmm. um or, or coda for that example mm-hmm. well coda is a different thing that's right that's just mentally taxing yeah <laughs> um but those will be coming mm-hmm. um i'm and uh something i'm working on uh i'm gonna s- experiment Mm -hmm. with uh having like a podcast feed where i speak out the articles and reviews and stuff like that and have Mm -hmm. like a podcast feed just for that so if people want to listen to that they can nice um and i think i'll do do some other things like i I really need to get into youtube movie reviews Mm -hmm. because i see a lot of traction on my q a's there Mm-hmm. Where I just dump my Q and A's, I'll see a hundred views, and I'm like, "Oh, wow, nice." Um, oh, um, another thing that was pretty cool, I took out ads across all three social media platforms on that Judas and the Black Messiah review. Oh yeah, I would highly recommend it. Yeah, taking yeah. out ads on Twitter or Facebook. I okay. can't say so for Instagram mm-hmm. because I didn't see a whole lot of return on Mm -hmm. that but facebook uh, i think twitter was the big one and then facebook and like i think i got 80 some odd views on that Mm -hmm. just from those ads and the stuff you helped me with of course um yeah it it really blew up after that uh (laughs) and yeah let's see i'm continuing yeah i already said falcon and the winter soldier stuff that's going to continue to be weekly. I don't know if I'll do a season review or do weekly recap like most of the YouTube people will because I don't right. know if I see a whole lot of... I don't know if I'm a weekly recap man. I, mm-hmm. Because I feel like that would be making two pieces of content for the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And at that point, you're like, okay, well, I could, but should I? Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, but yeah. Uh, oh, and... Uh, I think uh, I'm, I'm just going to be experimenting this month yeah, or, or I guess, idea. I guess next month actually. Next month, right. <laughs> um, because I kind of want to see if I could do interviews on the podcast, do movie reviews on the podcast. Uh, because I, 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 I look at, you know, next p- this picture and a lot of the podcasts I listen to, which is what mm-hmm. I mo- modeled the Austin B media podcast after. Mm-hmm. and i'm just like okay i can be doing all the austin b uh movies games all that stuff mm-hmm. but sometimes it feels like i'm rushing sometimes yeah 
uh, like I'll get to games and I'm like, well, I haven't played games since, you know, I haven't played Marvel's Avengers, so I have no unique insight into that other than looks bad. Okay. Right. <laughs> like I was initially going to get review code. Well, not if it, I asked for a review code for that mm-hmm. and I didn't get it. Uh, and then I realized it was a live service game. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, yikes. Yikes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm going to start, I'm going to update uh, a doc on Patreon mm-hmm. uh, for anyone who wants to um, see it. I'm going to put out my weekly schedule this week. Okay. Yeah, this Monday. All right, Monday at ten a.m. Nice. And Very cool. Yeah, um, because I'm going to be starting to send for April stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm planning for April right now. Okay. Um, because I always try and plan a month ahead. Mm-hmm. And I got to start finding out what's coming out in April <laughs> because I've kind of <laughs> well, I've been burying my head under the sand with Word, which I. I wholly recommend okay. um, as a uh, word processor, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. because their editor is actually really nice. Oh. You, you can turn on Very things. Cool. You can turn on things in their editor settings, mm-hmm. like gender inclusiveness. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, like it gets really granular in mm-hmm. there, and I kind of love that. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> I think I might actually stop subscribing to. Grammarly Premium for that reason. Mm, okay. Huh. Uh, oh, I know what I wanted to mention. Uh, oh, I, I thought of it last night at 11, a, 11 p.m. Like as I was going to sleep. It was like something on re- repeat. It, it might be a music series I might be doing. Mm-hmm. Like uh, I, I'll listen to a song over and over and over again. I'm actually right. planning on talking to spotify actually oh um, well, that's kind of cool not for like a branded thing mm-hmm. um but although i have talked to him about branded things in the past like a branded playlist where like things austin b media is listening to um but uh let's see yeah just stuff i'm listening to over and over again and dissecting that thing yeah i mean that sounds like a great idea Huh. Because, because I, I just haven't been doing a whole lot of music stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. And I kind of want to get into that, as I say, like a hundred times. Yeah, <laughs> I know. that's It's a lot to cover. So I've been, I've been like, I, for real is just focused on movies right now. And actually at this point, we're almost exclusively focused on film festivals. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but I thought about getting, like South by Southwest had me thinking about getting into TV um, yeah. Because I did watch a couple shows at South by um, that I kind of wanted to cover, um, but then I actually I actually ended up uh, it's it was interesting timing because I had no idea how I was going to cover South by Southwest um, with how short the festival was, and I yeah actually picked up um, a full-time job that's at an office, um, and I've actually worked with the company on, uh, a couple times before, but. Um, but yeah, I'm working a traditional job now, so I'm busy, you know, nine yeah. to five uh, with the commute, uh, an hour commute on either side of it. And and so my time was going to be very limited that week. But yeah. it out, the week before uh, South by started, I ended up um, testing positive for COVID. So I had, I had to stay home. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's a positive kind of there. I know timing. I didn't plan it. I swear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, by the way, COVID sucks. Um, yeah, I, my I mom. Uh, uh, not my mom. My gr- grandpa and grandpa had it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's. I didn't have any of those super severe system uh, symptoms. Like I didn't lose my taste or smell, and I didn't uh, no shortness of breath or anything. But man, those flu symptoms kicked my ass. Uh, for like the first weekend and then it was just kind of an annoying kind of cold uh, for the next week or so Um, but anyway I'm past that now but uh, but I did end up um, uh, covering South by Southwest a little more comprehensively than I had anticipated Um, but that um, I was saying all that because the having COVID during South by Southwest um, 
I was able to watch more and be able to um, take in more content, but I did, um, it, was, it was very hard for me to actually get writing done um, yeah. any more than I had to. And so that's why I was thinking like, I kind of want to cover these TV shows, um, but I just don't have the energy right now. So I'm going to stick to the movies that I'm covering. And, uh, and but at some point I, I, I want to make the transition to TV. I think that there's a lot of TV content that mirrors movie uh, kind of quality and storytelling as, um, a lot of TV shows have already demonstrated, but now that yeah. the MCU has been pulled to uh, into the TV universe, you know that kind of is extra incentive to like look at. It's an interesting process writing TV reviews, um, mm-hmm. because you I do the same process. It's still you know that main idea, strengths, weaknesses, unique ideas, final word, um, but largely it's just like okay how how does this flow is mostly what i talk about um that's the main difference is you are not at least from my perspective i'm not critiquing the plot mechanics because the plot mechanics are the season and Mm -hmm. the flow is the episode right yeah Yeah, or or at least we're as far as plot goes that's a good way of thinking about it uh, and then, yeah, I probably won't touch too much on cast because uh, I already mm-hmm. did it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it's very much a similar thing from the first episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's the same people. So, mm-hmm. um, uh, but uh, yeah, um, so it, it's interesting. Uh, like, there's a show I watched at Sundance. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Have you seen These Days? It was I'm that not. show with uh, William Jackson Harper. No, um, no, I didn't see that. They like premiered their pilot episode. I was like, okay, I like William Jackson Harper. I'll, I'm, I'll catch up. I'll watch mm-hmm. it. And then like it went radio silent. I have not heard a thing about it. So I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, I have no idea where this, what network this is going to be on, mm-hmm. when it's coming out, how it's coming out. Right. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'm not going to write any notes for this. Yeah, and you know, I actually don't know how the TV uh, universe works at film festivals, because I know movies, uh, independent film, tend to go to film festivals uh, in hopes of getting distribution. Um, yeah. And, but if you make a pilot, like, is that, are you looking for someone to pick up the rest of the series? Are you, do you have someone already just, like, funding the project but you're looking for a distributor like i don't i I don't know how that process works with tv i think for sundance is distributor focused okay although like i'm i was surprised at how slow that burn was on sundance yeah but i guess that makes me wonder like are are you in production with the rest of the episodes see movies they happen like you make the movie and then you put it out there and then it gets distributed but with the pilot like you still have you know, more episodes to make? Like, are those episodes already in production or are you just, did you just make this pilot and you're hoping for someone to finish financing the rest of the show? I had only watched this TV episode Mm -hmm. um, and it's the only one available, but I've only went to AFI Fest before Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't end up catching up with any of those shows (laughs) because I was like, you want me to watch a six hour thing? I think for AFI Fest, it was just like, here, watch some cool stuff Mm -hmm. um and i think it's kind of similar at sundance because they i think i don't think i watched the q a but they do that intro with Mm -hmm. every single thing that's like five minutes long Mm -hmm. and it's like okay i really want to get to the thing now um Mm -hmm. but i think in a pre in the intro i think he said that they'd already done all that like they had already shot all of it and and we're just i don't know if he mentioned looking for a distributor but i that was the feel i got right yeah yeah huh it's interesting because he talked about how small the production was like he would have the actors come like they he shipped like production kits to them and like rigs and all that stuff because covid uh so uh, crews couldn't be there so right 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 uh mm. but yeah uh oh uh another thing i'm planning 
Uh, and this just might be something I might toy around with and never publish because that some, sometimes happens. Uh, <laughs> like my drafts, I think I have like 15 drafts in my WordPress. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I actually, I have a draft of WeWork, uh, the WeWork documentary that I just have not, I, there's some tidying up I have to do on it, but I've just not hit publish yet and I, I need to do that. <laughs> yeah, like um, this is going to be, what is the perfect smartphone? What is the perfect? What is the perfect smartphone? Well, spoilers, uh, I guess. Uh, <laughs> oh no! If you don't spoil it, if it's in the article, I can go read it. <laughs> well, I haven't written it yet. Um, okay. I've got the basic idea of it down, mm -hmm. uh, but I haven't written out the outline. Um, Interesting. Basically, it came about in my search. Well, for the perfect smartphone, <laughs> because. I've had my Pixel 3a well, mm -hmm. uh, XL for two years, mm -hmm. and it's a fine phone. Uh, I also have a OnePlus 6T that I had. Mm -hmm. Well, I still have it. It's in my backpack somewhere. Um, and, and that's a good phone. I've also had the central phone, mm -hmm. uh, and I've also had iPhones. And so it's this weird smattering of yeah. I've, I had both OSs. And I'm just in article form. I'm just kind of spinning the. Well, I can't see because of the green screen. Let me see. Yeah. If I can defeat it. You're spinning the gears. <laughs> I see. Uh, uh, it, it's basically my process of spinning the gears for what makes a great smartphone. Oh. Because I don't think it's the iPhone 12. Mm-hmm. I think uh, there, there, there's a lot that you can consider with that. My my very very base uh requirement for a smartphone is that it has a stylus this is okay. very 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 important that is I not my, on my list this is oh yeah let me see <laughs> right there finger oh, the, sensor well yeah um for, just for security sake for me yeah no no i get that uh, with so i'm a samsung guy i guess here's my pitch for samsung uh products and for samsung to sponsor this little pitch um <laughs> yeah. uh th I have always been um, uh, attached to my Samsung Note products um, because it does seem like they um, they try to be innovative. They, they try to be a little gimmicky sometimes. Yeah. But as far as the technology goes, like it certainly it it works with my lifestyle because I do so much uh, business on my phone, um, social media, in marketing, creative stuff. Like I need a very high uh, processing phone that also won't. Um, longevity is also very important yeah. um you know batteries die really quickly if it's not a good battery um the, sl the phone slows down significantly if it's not if the processor isn't good yeah i'm um, noticing that on my Pixel right. 3a and, and it's only it, two years old right uh, oh wow I, i'm trying to i mean i didn't that. buy it new like when right. it first came out but like right well, before I'm, the pixel 4a came out i'm trying to think if i've ever used a phone for two years I should. I mean, this, this stuff's expensive. <laughs> um, yeah, like but, I'm about to pay this off. Yeah, nice. Good for you. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that, so for me, having high processing power, a good battery, longevity, and the stylus. And so, yeah, I end up, you know, the Note line of, of phones has been kind of that, um, has filled that demand for me. And I guess, you know, when you're looking at like the perfect mobile device, um, or mobile phone, everyone's going to have their preferences. Sometimes price yeah. plays a point in that. Like, it's okay, Samsung has everything, but are you willing to drop twelve to fourteen hundred dollars yeah. on on a phone? Um, you know, and that's that's a that's a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, it was weird because uh, my mom, she had an S seven or S nine. I can't remember which. I think it was an S nine. That mm -hmm. makes more sense because she had to upgrade because they said it was like this good processor and they're like mm. yeah we went to a shady place one of those oh, resellers no. oh no <laughs> we didn't know because it said right. verizon right and like we we're like okay this is a verizon store but apparently mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. um and uh, yeah um anyways she upgraded to like an s9 and then her mm -hmm. s9 broke because we have like our driveway is concrete mm-hmm and it dropped face flat 
and no. just cracked. So she's like, oh, okay, it'd be cheaper for me to buy a new phone mm-hmm. than to just replace this one. So she mm-hmm. got the S20 Fan Edition. Oh, nice. Very cool. Which, like, I, I love that she loves the phone, but that mm. 100, I don't know... I don't know about the 120 hertz. That oh uh, yeah, it, it's too. It refreshes too fast for me. Mm-hmm. Like it looks too fluid for me. Mm-hmm. Like I feel. I feel like that there should, in my mind, when you scroll, there should be at least like some hitching. Well, mm-hmm. that that doesn't make. No, um, <laughs> there should be some hitching in when you scroll. But this I mean, is just. Kinda, like, this is just like, like a flick, uh, and you can right. go 100 yards. Oh, yes. <laughs> Which I don't mind. But I mean, I guess that kind of it reminds me of like uh, watching movies at 60 frames a second. Or... Yeah, that's The Hobbit in 60 frames a second. We, we watched that and I got a headache. The, the movies are awful already. Like, <laughs> why would you do that to them? But Had to do it to yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, I've got to sign off here pretty soon. All right, uh, I got to do some stuff around the house. Yeah, yeah, lots of lot, lots got to be productive re- today. And review, but and review, yes, yeah, so it's some stuff I have to do with that as well. But this is fun. Yes, we should do this again. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah, I, I would really like to make this a regular thing. Um, and with uh, with my schedule, it'd be cool if we planned ahead to like make it a, a regular thing, maybe monthly or something. Yeah, I, I'm gonna. Yeah, I I really just need to get better about that i i get I'll, it i'll look at a month and then that month will be over <laughs> and then i'm like wait a minute yeah we're just still... like right now i'm like wait march is almost over it was just january right i know right the struggle is real so cool but well, this is a good talk man i really appreciate yeah. it and uh yeah we'll be in touch though yeah <laughs> so all right have a good day man we'll talk you later. too